Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. If you follow the channel, you recognize this scooter right here. It's the Robots Beater right here. It's my winter project. Ha ha ha, that's that's pretty funny. Last video I did about this scooter was about six months ago. Um, you know what happened? I got a new scooter and I put the red-headed stepchild in the back corner, not even in the garage. I just actually leave it outside. And ironically, I use it more than my new scooter because it's outside, ready to go. It's the trusted steed. It just starts every time. It's perfectly reliable, but who cares how it looks? So still sitting there. That's my next goal is to do some videos on cosmetic improvements, but eh, life gets in the way along with a new scooter, my 2023 GTS. Well, Right around the corner, I don't know if this video is going to publish before or after the Scooter Cannonball, but I'm going to follow the Scooter Cannonball for the first day from San Clemente to Lake Havasu. It's going to be some miserable riding in the heat, but it's also going to be some pretty fun riding through Ortega Highway and Joshua Tree National Park, even though it's going to be a little toasty out there, probably by the late morning time you'd make it out there on Sunday morning. And well, I'm go myself, I'm gonna go out there, Lake Havasu, then come back on Monday. Still pretty much a thousand mile ride. And kind of just wanna set myself up for success. I wanna prepare the scooter, you know, check the basics. I know mechanically it's pretty good. Um, went through the motor, transmission, it's got fresh tires but just check the fluids, check the tires, and do some just basic upgrades. I wanna share that with all you guys. So every scooter owner should be checking their tires, preferably every ride you go on, but I know that's not really possible. Hit minimum once a month on your scooter, regardless of how much you use it. Uh, always check your stem, give it a little push, make sure there's no cracks, it doesn't wanna pull out, and it looks pretty good. That's a fresh stem, because I put that in there. Um, I never really clean the scooter, so there's some goop on the side of the tire. Uh, also give the tire a spin. Look for any nails or debris or cuts in the tread. That's always pretty important to do. A lot of people overlook that. A lot of times just even checking the pressure and knowing what the pressure is, um, you kind of have an idea of how things are. So obviously pressure is pretty good. I'm happy with 27 and a half PSI in there. Um, no problems there. Make sure all your lug nuts are in place. And it's perfect time, always have like a pocket flashlight on you. Take a peek at the brake pads. And the camera's not gonna get it, but I know that there's plenty of uh, material in there. And the brakes are working fine, not making any uh, metal to metal kind of noises. So uh, typically on these GTSs, the brake pads last quite a long time, especially on these older GTSs. Now I'll check the rear tire as well. Obviously the rear tire is exposed to a lot more heat and wear just because it's a drive tire. So that's the one you really need to check and you don't see it as readily as the front tire. So just um, even more important the front tire, checking the stem, the tire tread, uh, the tire for any debris, and most important, the pressure. So the best thing about a GTS, you have it on the center stand. It's got a, a tire with, uh, I would say it's less than 500 miles on it. That, so on here, the stem cap's missing. So I don't know if it just fell off. Always good to have that, especially if you get gravel or something, it could cause a leak. Uh, pressure's pretty good right there. 32, 34, you know, somewhere in there if you need to, if you have two up, maybe go up to the maximum pressure of the tire, about 35, 36 for a GTS that is. And while you're at it, you know, you might as well make some visual inspections. This is your water pump cover on a GTS. Make sure there's no coolant weeping from the hole that's hidden kind of right above where the header is. The muffler's cold right now. Uh, there's a weep hole. If you see any coolant residue on the muffler, uh, that's a telltale. Same with the hose clamps. Check all this stuff. Just look at it, know what, what looks normal. You should be in the habit of always checking this kind of stuff. Make sure all three fasteners hold the muffler in place. Um, obviously, I look at these all the time. I try not to look at the damage on the scooter, but I look at the mechanical aspects of the scooter. It all looks good. Oil filters, nice and clean and not leaking or loose. 
Um, then we'll go on to the left side and actually check the oil level, pretty important. Of course, it's on the center stand on a nice level surface. That's always the best solution when you're doing an inspection of your scooter. So the engine's cool. Uh, you can get the most accurate oil level ring with a cool engine. You can clean the dipstick, just unthread it, then thread that back in place. Now I'm kind of a flashlight nerd. I always like having extra light. Helps make the inspection much easier. And I can tell you it's right at the low mark, just, just below the low mark. So I need to do a little top off. Oil still looks pretty clean, but I'll go ahead and add a little bit of oil in here. All right, so let's do a little oil top up. Well, the nice thing, if you have a 2019 prior GTS, it's actually a fairly easy job with a regular small size funnel. Got the Castrol Power One, full synthetic uh, Jasso certified oil. That's the original equipment manufacturer oil for Piaggio and Vespa products. Got that available on the Scooter West web store. And let's see how much it takes to bring it from that low mark to the high mark. Definitely don't wanna um, overfill it. It's also a good idea just to, to cut the foil out because if you actually pull the foil or leave remnants, sometimes the cap will leak a little bit. If you um, cut it out, then it kind of seals with the cap a little bit better because my plan is to bring this oil with me. If this scooter's burning a little bit of oil in 500 to 1,000 miles, I uh, may want to just have oil or just extra oil for somebody else that's on the road that might need it. So let's give it maybe 200 cc's, about a fifth of the bottle. They do have the nice little scale on the side. So this is one quart, so it's a little less than a uh, liter. Give it one more, just a little splash there. And as with any of these Vespa products, Piaggio's, thread that uh, dipstick all the way back in. Pull it back out, let's double check it. Uh, it's bringing it right to the quarter mark. Actually, it was a little bit below the, um, the low mark, so. Let's see, that's probably gonna do it. And the idea is you could just get it in between the two, but I'm gonna try to get it to the full mark. Definitely not over the full mark. And I feel for you, if you have a 2020 and later model, they're not exactly easy to fill or top off. Look at that, perfect. It's right to the full mark. So we're set for the oil. I used a little less than 250 cc. So about, just about three quarters of this bottle. You can see it on the scale. Um, the way I'd bring a, a bottle of oil with me on a scooter, I'd probably put that in a Ziploc plastic bag. Uh, the funnel, I usually like having a rag with me, so I'll shove that in there. This is like old two-stroke riding because you'd have the, the ratio right to mix your oil. And whenever you shove a rag in there, it kind of sops up whatever extra oil, and you can put that in your, um, your bag to take with you. I know the air filter is fine. Um, you always see a little bit of weepage around here. That's pretty normal. Sometimes you pull that off if there's any blow by. I'm not riding the scooter on the freeway that much, so not really an issue but it's not really a problem usually if they leak a little bit of oil that's not no concern I mean, if the, the scooter goes on site it might put quite a bit of oil into the air box uh, this is a little air scoop for the belt cover uh, give the tire spin listen to the bearings i mean you just hear a little bit of noise that's very normal noise but not excessive noise from any of the bearings in both the gear case or this um, the bearings inside the clutch when the clutch is disengaged. All right, so you want to check the coolant level on a GTS Vespa, the GT200, even the newest model, it's all in the same location. So remove the single screw that holds that little cover. Obviously engine's nice and cold. Let's see if we can get this cap off by hand. Yeah, I didn't tighten it all that tight. Uh, you watch some of my coolant flush videos to see um, how to remove it if it's tight. You could use actually the fork stem tool. Um, I flushed the coolant because I had the motor out at one point. It doesn't look like it's really used anything. And the one way you could kind of easily check it also, just for visual reference, 
put a flashlight in there and I have the uh, ethyl glycol replacement coolant in there. Um, sometimes I have the, the, the pink organic coolant originally and that's a little harder to see, you know, it kind of fades in color, but I can see it's just below the high mark. That's perfect. So no problems there. Uh, it's not alarming to find the coolant a little bit low, even though you don't see any leaks where it's dripping. The thing about these Vespa scooters, they have two radiators and pretty much there's a dozen different joints for the cooling system, you know, that are uh, hoses with hose clamps. So you get a small amount of weepage from those hose clamps under the floorboard, all in this area. You got just several clamps. You got junctions all over the place. You got the coolant tank. And they just lose a little bit of coolant through those, especially in hot climates. All right, so one other little check. I want to see the health of the battery. I know this has a fairly new battery, so um, kind of like the drive belt. If you're doing a long trip, sometimes it's just best to start with a battery. Say you have a three-year-old battery. I mean, the battery might go five years. It may be just a good idea to change it regardless. Same with a dry belt. Say if you have 5,000 miles on the belt and you're going to do a cross-country trek, I would suggest just changing it. Um, but regardless, I know the battery's good. It cranks over the scooter well. We have specific capacity testers. Uh, make sure the battery's not too loose. It moves a little bit, that's okay, but the clamp needs to hold the battery in place. If the, if the battery's bouncing around in here, the bolts will come loose, but it's also worth checking these every once in a while. See, so just give them a little crunch. Uh, should be using the number two screwdriver, um, and it should be fine. And just, I, I know how the scooter cranks. It cranks really strong. You know, nice, strong cranking, and I know the battery is pretty new, so, um, I feel like I'm set up for success with a battery. Um, if you're doing the Cannonball, you have so much money invested, come on, just buy a new battery, start with a fresh one. Uh, especially if you know it's like more than a year old or two years old or something. But same with doing any type of, uh, I don't know, I would almost call it extreme uh, touring with a Vespa or any scooter. Always good to start with a fresh belt. So just like the belt, air filter, spark plug, probably just start out with fresh ones, you know, before you do the journey. But the spark plugs actually, they have a longer life typically than the dry belt. There's a clamp that's holding the spark plug lead on. So I'm kind of set up for success. Uh, on the early GTSs, they had a tendency to want to pop the cap off. Uh, this has got a later cylinder head on it with the clamp on it. Another thing I have set up here is there's an extra zip tie. And I showed when I've overhauled this motor or pull this motor out to do some work on it. You lightly put a zip tie to hold the injector to the far left. That's pretty important because if this injector is in the middle, like it actually will move around. And if you hit a big bump, the underseat bucket will make contact with this and damage the injector. And then you'll be um, kind of in the dark because your injector is going to stop working. But you just want to double check everything here. I see everything's zip tied down. Everything's routed correctly. There's no wiring that's chafing. You kind of just looking at all this stuff. Uh, obviously, if you're looking at it for the first time, you don't know what you're really looking at. Um, make sure the connectors, sometimes these connectors will melt on older GTSs. There's a fuse block here, another fuse block on the left side of the scooter. Those are, both those fuse blocks are critical for the engine operation. So um, if you have problems with those fuses or you blow one, um, you know where to look for them, along with the fuse block that's in the glove box. A lot of people don't know there's more of them there. Um, but visually, everything looks good. I don't see any coolant weeping from this thermostat housing, something that you'd find on a older GTS. Uh, new one, they've improved the thermostat quite a bit. There's actually aluminum thermostat housing that you could replace this plastic one with if you're opting to replace it out. Very common for these to start weeping coolant over over the age. Uh, it all runs good. I've already done an intake manifold. So I don't think there's anything else I need to look at under the hood. So recently in Mera Vespa 2023, I had three people come up to me and say, hey, I don't have the key for my scooter. What should I do? Well, pretty much all these Vespas, uh, modern Vespas, they have an immobilizer in the key, which is a great thing, kind of prevents people from driving off of the scooter. 
But if you're doing a cross country trip or some long distance touring or even putting on a trailer and going across the country, you have a spare key on you, you may want to have that spare key on you on the scooter in a hidden spot. Well, Karen Schneider, she's an old cannonball contendent and she showed me this trick. Uh, underneath the taillight is a good spot. Of course, I'm uh, letting you know where the key is to the spare key to my scooter is, but how many thieves are gonna think, oh, I wanna take the taillight off to steal the scooter, it's not gonna happen. But it's just a good spot to hide a key. So when you pull the taillight off on one of these older scooters, there's a little pocket right here, and a key will fit right in there, no problem. So you can put a little block of foam in here, just to kind of keep the key from bouncing around and vibrating. It's not really gonna hurt the wiring. Uh, you could use tape, you could use zip ties, there's many ways, but the taillight happens to be like a good little stash spot on these uh, Vespa GTS scooters. And many other scooters as well, you know, the, there's like a lot of hollow cavity. I mean, other options, you could zip tie, you know, the magnetic hide keys aren't really gonna work on these. You know, you hit a, a bump or something, it's, it's gonna probably bounce out. But you kind of just tuck that right in there. And if this video is published before the cannonball starts, uh, if you see my scooter, you'll be able to steal it. But I know I'm set up for success because I know in the back of my mind there's an extra key if I happen to lose my single key that I'll be using to ride the scooter. So maybe you really want to uh, stash something away. Maybe you could put a hundred behind there as well. I don't know, could be a realistic situation. You lose your wallet, don't have a credit card to gas pump. Well, guess what? The $100 bill is probably gonna get you back halfway across the country on a Vespa with the fuel economy it gets. You're not gonna be eating, but you don't know. Sometimes you just need money, another spot to stash money. And you're wondering about tools. Well, the tools that are included in the glove box of the scooter um, do have a Phillips screwdriver. Obviously, you probably got the, the steering lock, but there, um, there are ways around. I'm not gonna show it in the video, I'm sorry but you could reach around and open up the glove box um, from the left hand little knee pad thing. Got to reach in there and find the uh, latch. Uh, kind of don't want to show how to break into people's scooters, but that's pretty much how you do it. Um, but you can find a Phillips anywhere as well. Ask somebody on the side of the road. So just to sum it up, I feel like the scooter is pretty mechanically uh, sound, ready to go for a long ride. Whether it's the can ball or you're just doing an overnight camping trip with your scooter cross country, a couple hundred miles. Um, but there's a lot more to it than just having a machine that's prepared. You want to set yourself up for su success as well. You want to have the correct kind of riding apparel, preferably like proper padded motorcycle gear that includes like riding boots and pants, you know, an upper jacket. You know, obviously in the summertime, you want stuff that's better vent ventilated and lighter in color. In the wintertime, you want to have extra layers, maybe even bring extra layers um, with the scooter. That's the great thing about Vespa, you get extra spots to store extra gear. You know, hydration, extra food if you're going to um, have some long stops, uh, fuel. Pretty easy to travel in North America, you pretty much can make it anywhere between gas stops, even in some of the most remote areas with a Vespa GTS, as long as you're not passing gas and you know where to stop, these things pretty much go over 100 miles per tank full, even operating them at the higher speeds. Um, but there's lots of other videos out there to kind of show how to dress and how to prepare yourself for a long ride. And I would always suggest for somebody to work themselves up to a long ride. Say you've always ridden in your own town, 20 miles max, and all of a sudden you want to do 400 miles, I would suggest working up. Do a 100 mile ride, maybe a 200 mile ride, which is like 200 miles, you can do that about half day, and then work yourself up to maybe doing a 400 mile day. Don't, you just don't want to test out your limits all of a sudden, see if you can pull that off. Especially when you're close to home, uh, that's the best place to be kind of doing some test rides to kind of test out your gear and your abilities to do long, long distance riding on a scooter. But I hope those tips help you out. Um, 
have fun on your scooters. It's not just for commuting around town and grocery getting. There's a lot more you can do with these things. Until next time, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. I'll see you in the next one.